Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. And now, Harry's is offering a free trial set. Just pay shipping. Go to harrys.com slash ham nation. And by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash ham nation. And by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash ham nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 274 for November 16th, 2016. Questions for kids. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Ham Nation. I'm George W5JDX. Bob Hall is out tonight. He's on the road. Uh, if he if he makes it home in time, maybe he'll drop in with us for a few minutes. But uh, you know how flights are. He he probably is delayed in Timbuktu or somewhere. Speaking of Timbuktu, we've got our friend from out on the west coast, Gordon West. Uh, Tin Buck 2 is still here, George, and uh, wait till you see um, all the excitement coming up on Short Shots. Back to you. Okay, Gordo. Can't wait for that. We've also got uh, Don Wilbanks with us tonight. Say hello, Don. Hello, Don. And I'm still Hi, Don. hurting. I'm, st I'm still hurting from losing the, uh, the Saints uh, Broncos bet to Amanda. Yes, I paid off. I put the picture of her choice up on my Facebook page. Short week. We've got Carolina this week, and I'm going to learn my lesson one of these times about betting on the Saints, George. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, <laughs> I paid off my bet, and uh, I'm licking my wounds, and, and I, I can't wait to hear Amanda gloat lay at the end of the show when she comes in. Well, I mean, you, you set it up, Don. You know, what can I know you it. say? It yep. happens every day. At least this time, I, I didn't lose a 60 or $70 lunch like I did three or four times in a row back when yeah. they were really bad so yeah hmm. I'll, I'll i'll take i'll take a facebook shaming that's fine yeah around here they uh during the losing streaks in the past they called them the ain'ts yeah with bags so, on their heads yeah 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 those days are over thankfully yeah and we've also got val with us tonight with some more dx excitement hi dale dale hello yeah hi, val. well Last time I was on, it was two weeks ago tonight, and the Cubs were playing in the final game of the World Series, which, of course, they ended up winning. So I have to gloat about that, which is hey. about time. But, hey, we've been having some power line, power line noise issues. So I just got uh, this uh, from uh, MFJ. It's pretty cool. You line up the holes, and then you can listen to it with headphones, and it does uh, 40 kilohertz. Um, and so we're trying to figure out where this power line issue is coming from because it's uh, shutting us down on 15 meters and it always ha happens during a contest. So hopefully we'll figure this one out. But a lot of good stuff coming up in my segment. So make sure you stay tuned. Yeah, those things really work, Val. I have used one of them before. We, uh, we got one here to try out when they first released it. Uh, boy, listen to the crickets and everything. You'll be surprised at what <laughs> stuff sounds like. I even found an extremely noisy wall wart in, in the shack here. It took me a while to figure it out. I never would have guessed that's where all that racket was coming from. I, I wouldn't have heard it normally, but, uh, well, that, that bigger sure did there. Well, Gordo, what's going on with short shots tonight? Well, everything is fine on uh, this side of the coast. Uh, this Thursday, we're going to see the Santa Fe Trail Amateur Radio Club in the Midwest. We're going to see them on Skype. And then this Friday, Gene at KJI and Randy and Marianne and Drew and the cats, they're going to be opening up KJI Electronics for three days, and I'll join them on Saturday. Not quite live, but I'll be live via Skype. So those of you in New Jersey, New York, I'll see you there. 
and uh, the Midwest. We'll see you on Thursday. So a full schedule and lots of things happening out here. Now, last week, everybody was picking mercifully on me and my hair. So I want to just tell you how it ended up so badly last week. And then you'll have a better understanding as to what we go through to bring you these casts on a bad hair day. Here I am just taking a nice little wave and all is well. And um, the wave is what we call closed out. And when it closes out, it's like a laundry machine. So I've had my hair cut, so get off my case. Uh, that's why the bad hair day last week. And that was a sizable wave, too. Well, a couple of weeks ago was the Stone Mountain, Georgia. Try and say that again. Stone Mountain, Georgia Ham Fest. And uh, that's Will Jordan and uh, Will representing ICOM America. Uh, we understand their booth was packed the entire time. And Stone Mountain really did a great job of presenting the seminar for those swapping. Look at this. Talk about a great swap haul. They had it made in the shade, but not everybody wanted the shade on such a bright, sunny day out in Stone Mountain, Georgia. So take a look outside. And this was some of the swap meet activity outside. And uh, over to the right-hand side, you can begin to see that big uh, antenna attached to attached to the ICOM mobile. And uh, ICOM was there showing off its emergency management interoperability uh, unit and there were so many radios only George could uh, get them on video <clears throat> but ICOM always does a great job of supporting public service and I like those hams that also support public service this ham is ready they are ready for everything the gear is slightly older than the ICOM gear but nonetheless likely made uh, for uh, talking all around the world and uh, over at the uh, W5YI and Master Publishing uh, booth, there's Eric, KL7AJ, and Peter, 9SMG. And uh, they're looking awfully happy because it was a great weekend out in the field. And I enjoy that. I sort of came to the field, but again, it was via Skype. And you know, many of us on Ham Nation are happy to Skype into your club meeting. All you got to do is give us about a month warning and beam us up and we'll be there. So meet you on Skype. Well, one thing for sure, there was a big push to get more kids into ham radio. And that's our point for tonight is kids in ham radio. This is nice, a sign that says, come on and see what we're doing. In other words, play a little third party traffic or this one or the kids uh, care to say hello on ham radio. <coughs> What we need to do is to get more kids in the ham radio. But are today's technician class exams written at, let's say, this young lady's uh, reading level and uh, understanding level? You have an opportunity when we finish tonight of either sending to the na uh, National NCVEC, the National Conference of Volunteer Exam Coordinators, uh, questions that you would like to see for technician, or you can send them to me and I will forward them directly to uh, those uh, responsible for fielding questions. But we're looking for Q&As, especially for kids, for the technician class license. Now, it doesn't rotate for another two years, but we need more kids. And I think we can rewrite some of the existing great questions and make them kid ready. So be thinking about writing questions to get more of those kids on the air and passing their tests. And again, where you submit the questions is QPC, that's Question Pool Committee Input, at sign National Conference of Volunteer Exam Coordinators, abbreviated NCBEC.org. Or if you forget all those letters, just send them to me, WB6NOA at ARRL.net and I will forward them on, all of them. <clears throat> kids are important. And we encourage kids to do more than just get a license, but actually get on the air. And here was at Pacific Con, some of the kids' activities putting together code oscillators and having a great time with kits. <clears throat> you know, kids and kits make sense. That's Joe, our Mr. Kit guy, and he is at night 
Fire Electronics. That is the group that puts out more kits for kids and adults, Night N-I-G-H-T, Fire, F-I-R-E, Electronics. Look them up, and they've got kits. <laughs> These kits are approved for kids to have fun putting together a CW oscillator. Or uh, this uh, older uh, kit, uh, yeah, he looks somewhat familiar. Yeah, well, that's Don. Uh, he's, uh, let's see, what are you putting together, Don? He's got, I'm not sure what he's got. He'll explain in just a few minutes. But kits are important. Uh, no, you won't find this at Night Fire Electronics. This is the Gordo kit. And uh, that's Daniel uh, uh, showing off uh, how electrons flow in a uh, semiconductor being a pickle with a lot of uh, salt on the inside. Ways to attract kids at HamFest. We'll be doing this at QuartzFest coming up in January, the 22nd to the 29th. Drones. And kids love drones. <clears throat> so we're going to have a drone day at QuartzFest. Also, we're going to be tuning in at QuartzFest and making contact with the International Space Station. That's an ARRL-sanctioned event just before QuartzFest gets started with all the Quartzsite Arizona schools coming together for that special uh, day. And we want to remind everybody that the International Space Station, you can contact them via packet and APRS, not on VHF, but they've gone to UHF or 437.550, 437.550, and that's where they'll be until the new Kenwood uh, D710G that uh, Phil and Bob Reninga are working on today down at uh, the uh, Johnson Space Center. They're working on it and getting it all tuned up to go aloft and uh, be able to get back on uh, the two-meter band. So, uh, Phil Parton and uh, Bob Reninga, thank you for your efforts to uh, get another uh, space uh, radio ready to go aloft. And Don Arnold for tipping me off on that information. And that's Clint, the uh, satellite guy, and uh, he's a lot of fun to learn about working satellites. But, you know, you don't have to necessarily work a satellite to get the kids involved. Uh, just tuning into any one of the many satellites coming uh, up and over. China has so many going overhead now that you're bound to hear them as long as you know the frequencies. AMSAT.org. That's your spot to find the satellites. So get kids involved with ham radio and get them tuned in to satellites. Now, here are two very special kids out of an entire family, about six of them that are all ham radio operators. That's Faith. She got her license at 10 years, and she's now getting on to CW. That's Grace in the background. She got her license uh, when she was eight years old. And you are going to hear them on the air, says John um, of uh, Last Man Standing. John Amadeo says that on December 6th, when they go on the air from their ham station uh, at the shack there, uh, the kids will be on the air. That's the Leah family, and they're visiting December 6th. They'll be on the air for two hours, uh, dinner time, on uh, many different bands, including, I'm sure, D-Star. So uh, thanks, John Amadeo, for uh, getting our uh, kids on the air and putting them on the air on the set of Last Man Standing. Yeah, they'll be really smiling when they get on that show. And uh, more kids we get on the air by passing the tests. <clears throat> We're good for seeing our ham radio service going. Kids are great because they're about the only ones that for hours can sit here like that and put together beam antennas. If I did that, we'd need a crane to get me back up after falling down on a huge wave. So... Kids are important for the growth of ham radio. In fact, there's another kid, a pair of kids. And we understand at the new studio, we're getting things lined up. And hopefully soon we'll hear Leo back on our airways. You can hear him every Saturday and Sunday on AM and FM radio across the country. But uh, thanks, Leo, for giving us this time on your show. And Ray, thanks for being so generous to sponsor all our antics here. So, kids, we are working, and I ask all of you, if you have 
what you feel are better questions and answers that would be more readable for kids, not dumbing down the Q&As, but just rewording them, you can send them to qpcinput at ncvec.org. Or if all those letters and numbers uh, uh, get you mixed up, you can send them to me, wb6noa at arrl.net. And I will forward every single one on to representatives of the question pool committee. So they're looking for more questions. They're also looking for questions on digital. So if you're a DMR or a D-Star or a fusion operator and you think uh, we need some technician class questions, get them all written up. Send me an email and I'll tell you where to send them or send them to me and I'll forward them. But we need input from all ham operators to take that license, the technician class license, and make it kid friendly. And everybody that uh, gets a hold of me, I'll make sure that we put you on the instructor's book. And this instructor's book is absolutely free through the W5YI and Master Publishing System. And it's how to teach kids ham radio, also Boy Scouts, how to teach technician and the merit radio badge all at once. So kids, we're on your side. You out there, we sure hope that you'll send in questions to the NCVEC. And I know that they'll consider every new question coming in for technician class. We're still a year and a half away until the questions rotate, but they're getting a head start on it and are looking for your input. So that's my story, and I will now go back to, I believe, Don has it next. Don, sorry about losing the game. Sorry, sorry. Well, you know, there's got to be a winner. There's got to be a loser, and uh, the Saints are doing pretty good uh, here of late, uh, much better than they used to be, so that's okay. It was a close game. You could say it was a close shave. <laughs> See what I did there? You're going to talk about Harry's. I love Harry's. I, I mean, I, you know, you know, I've said this many times. I'm a confirmed electric guy because in the morning it's just so quick. But when I want to do something nice for myself, I get out Harry's. This is the older. This is the older Harry's. It's it's all nice and hard and shiny plastic. But the new one looks exactly the same except for the color. But this has a rubberized coating on it. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a texture on it, too. So it's not nearly as slick in your hand. Um, the blades have been improved too, and a, 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 a cushier, a cushier hinge. It's it's all around better. If you're not a Harry's shaver, you really, you really need to be because it's a great company. It's a great product, and and I, I seriously, I think it's something. When I want to pamper myself, I get out the Harry's because it's it's great. If I'm going someplace special, I get out the Harry's to do something nice for my my funny honey. I get out the Harry's. And you know how big razor companies just keep putting out new models and raising their already high prices? Harry's doesn't do that. They don't believe in upcharging. They, uh, they make a bunch of improvements to their razors, and then they keep them the exact same price. They're still just $2 a blade compared to four or more uh, for those blades you'll buy at the drugstore. And the reason they can, they can keep them so inexpensive is because they own the factory in Germany, and they make the blades. And by owning the factory and making the blades, they produce high-quality razors themselves, and you get them for half the price. The five blade razors now include, like I said, the softer hinge, it's a more comfortable glide, a trimmer blade for hard to reach places right on the edge, right on the top edge of the, of the, of the insert. There's a lubricating strip and the textured rubberized handle for more control when it's wet and you will appreciate that like, like you can't believe. In fact, Harry's is so confident uh, of the blades and the quality of their blades, they will send you the popular free trial set. Comes with the razor, Five blade cartridge and shaving gel, and it's free when you sign up for a shave plan. Uh, there's a special offer for Ham Nation viewers. You get a bottle of Harry's Post Shave Balm. I have this right here in my hand. You're gonna love this. This is a good sized bottle too. It's it's uh, it's nice. It smells great. You get this out of the order for free when you visit Harry's.com/slash/HamNation. So go to Harry's.com/slash/HamNation right now. Claim your free trial set. And post shave balm, harrys.com slash ham nation. You're going to love Harry's as much as I do. I can almost guarantee you. It's a great product, great price, great people. And they, uh, they're they supporters of ham nation. So uh, what more can you say? Harry's, thank you so much for your support of uh, our little dog and pony show here on uh, Leo's Twit Network. Right now, why don't we get 
a look at the news of the week from Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline report number 2037, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, November 16th, 2016. A supermoon, as we had the evening on November 14th, is when the moon passes much closer to the Earth than is usual and appears to be much bigger. Some are questioning how this affects moon bounce, or EME, amateur communications. Paul Brown, WD9GCO, has some insight from an expert. A supermoon is when the moon passes much closer to the Earth than is usual, and it appears to be much bigger. Some are questioning how this will affect moon bounce, or EME, amateur communications. I spoke with Al Katz, K2UYH, who is very active in moon bounce. Uh, it's beautiful, and uh, you know you see a full moon, especially when it's uh, near horizon, and it looks enormous, and it even looks more enormous during a super moon. It's interesting to watch, but otherwise, it's business as usual. It has virtually no effect, and the the reason it's people aren't as interested in it, of course, is because you can work long distances all the time. The advantage of getting these weak signals off the moon, because there's still weak signals even at 15 meters, versus the even under bad conditions, uh, you're still better off using skip and HF propagation. If your only objective is to, you know, to work in interesting place, which is one of the exciting parts of amateur radio. Ham radio is showing up more and more in pop culture. Featured prominently on Last Man Standing and the CW Network television show Frequency, just to name a couple. Now there's an international motion picture collaboration with a ham radio twist. Warmer relations between the U.S. and Cuba led to a Cuban-American team of contesters in the CQ Worldwide SSB contest in October of 2015. And now it seems the nation's ever-growing friendship has led to a new movie. Sergio and Sergei, which is scheduled to be released in 2017, is the story of a cosmonaut stranded on the Mir space station because the collapsing Soviet Union cannot afford to bring him back to Earth. Not unexpectedly, Ham Radio is the star of the film because it saves the day. The cosmonaut uses the onboard radio and contacts a professor in Cuba for help. The professor, in turn, reaches out to a journalist in the U.S. who covers NASA. The storyline isn't only an example of a U.S.-Cuba partnership. The film itself is a collaborative effort between the two nations. Deadline Hollywood quotes producer Ron Perlman as saying this is the first Cuban-American co-production of such a film in 60 years. The film echoes a 1999 movie, Mere Friends, made in Ireland, based on the true story of Russian cosmonaut Sergei Krikalev, UZ-3AK, slant U5MIR, and his long-distance radio friendship with Irish amateur Manus Joe McClafferty, EI7EQ. Manus McClafferty became a silent key earlier this year. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Heather Emby, KB3TZD. This week in radio scouting looks at the success of Joda 2016. Although radio counts and registered stations saw a drop this year, the USA put on 10,761 total scouts, a 51% increase, 6,668 total visitors, a 30% increase, and 1,120 amateur radio operators, a 14% increase. The registrations were marred a bit by the cumbersome registration process, which hopefully will be resolved for next year's running of Jamboree on the Air. Jim Wilson, K5ND, will be doing further analysis on the data and will be working on a finalized report for publication, which should be available within the month. He also said thanks again to everyone who got on the air, shared the fun, technology, and magic of amateur radio with scouts. For more information on K2BSA and radio scouting, please visit www.k2bsa.net. For Amateur Radio Newsline and the K2BSA Amateur Radio Association, this is Bill Stearns, NE4RD. For the rest of this week's Amateur Radio News, please listen to the full Amateur Radio Newsline report online on a repeater near you or on shortwave radio station WTWW at 9930 and 5085 kilohertz. That's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at www.arnewsline.org. With Paul Brown, WD9GCO, Heather Emby, KB3TZD, Bill Stearns, NE4RD, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the News Desk in New York, and our news team across the globe, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. I got to tell you, I got to see the supermoon the other night. I was driving home across Lake Pontchartrain, and it was coming up over the water. It was absolutely gorgeous. But this is the time that we normally talk about the sun with Dr. Tamitha Scove. She is not with us tonight live or via tape. But uh, we do have some images from her. We're looking at uh, at an eruption, actually, that uh, that is happening sort of right now. You see filament one, two, and three on here, and filament one erupting. But filament three 
is the one that you want to keep your eye on. In her words, she uh, she sent me a, a Twitter private message earlier. Filament 3 is the one that may be Earth-directed. If so, it will be wimpy and will likely hit sometime on the 19th. So uh, Filament 3, there's, uh, she's saying, uh, might, be, uh, might be something to look forward to on the 19th. Now, going to the uh, next one, the five-day outlook. Uh, here we see uh, what we can expect uh, for the next five days down in the mid-latitudes where we are pretty much normal normal to unsettled around the 19th when uh, you see that uh, that eruption uh, that may be earth directed come and uh, come toward us and then uh, for the uh, for the, the next picture where it gives us the uh, solar flare and particle radiation she says that uh, flux is marginal but it's hanging in there and uh, there you go that's uh, I'm certainly no no dr. Scove but uh, <laughs> I think you kind of maybe get the idea of, uh, of what's going on. And, of course, just uh, follow her on Twitter, at Tamitha Scove, uh, and uh, you can get almost real-time updates from her. She, uh, she does a lot of good things. George, did you see the supermoon? Did you see it? It was I, gorgeous. I did, Don. It was uh, really large here. You know, it just seems like we have supermoons all the time now. We never had any when I was a kid. But I'll have to, sh which reminds me, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to, I'll have to send you the picture of, uh, of me in the Santa Claus outfit from many, many, many years ago. My mother-in-law was taking pictures. We were over at, uh, over at her house and I, and I had the Santa Claus suit on and she says, well, I have, I have one more picture left. And you know, we were shooting film. So I said, well, uh, here you go. And I turned around, dropped them and she took the picture. And let me tell you, that was a super moon. I made, I made <laughs> Christmas cards out of that. I did. I bet you did. I bet you did. But we don't have Brian here tonight with the censored slide, and I don't know if Victor has it handy there. So I, we, you don't want to see it. You really we, don't. You don't want to see we it. We better save that for Christmas, Don. Yeah. Say good night, Gracie. <laughs> oh, he's got go. it. Uh. <laughs> well, tonight I've got uh, a little something I'm going to show you here. This is a project that I built with the help of our friend Mike, the E3MIC, back last year sometime. It's a, a little device you hook to your scope here and allows you to do all kinds of neat things. Attack of the Scope Squid. Today we're going to build a little project with the help of our friend, Mike, VE3MIC, who got the parts together and did the research for it. It's called the Scope Squid. Now, a lot of people call this an octopus, but... Mike thought we should call it a squid because it looks more like a squid to him. To start with, we've got our box with the lid, and Mike has made a nice little label here to go on the front of it. What he did was took a piece of, I guess, self-adhesive paper, printed all the layout on it, all the decals, and then he laminated it with a clear sheet of MacTech. And we've got two BNC connectors on here, one to go to the vertical, and one of the horizontal inputs of our oscilloscope. And we've got a place for two test probes. And we've got a couple of test leads here to go with it. What we'll do is hook a component across here, and then we can look on the scope and determine what that component is and some of the properties of it. Now, I've got several pieces of cable here. I've already tinned and got ready to go. These are actually RG174, which is probably not necessary to have shielded cables on this, but Mike had a little piece and he stuck it in the package, so that's what we're using. I've stripped them back, tinned them, and I've taken a little piece of the jacket, slipped over the shields there. You could have used heat shrink tubing for that, but I'll often use a piece of the jacket because it's good enough and it's pretty heavy. Now we've got a transformer here that was really made to be mounted on a printed circuit board. So Mike got kind of creative with that. We needed some way to mount it in the box here where it wasn't going to rattle around. He took a little piece of PC board and trimmed it to where it will fit the slots inside the box here just perfectly, and that'll hold the transformer in place. Plus, it'll give us a way to get connections to it. And to make the traces on here, what he did is took a little drill bit and a Dremel tool, and he routed the traces onto the board here. And he said it went amazingly easy. Good idea on that one. I mean, you wouldn't want to do any surface mount work with this kind of technique, but should work good for this case right here. Let's take a look at the schematic now. It's pretty simple. We've got a transformer here. 
that puts out 6.3 volts. This one has two secondaries on it. We'll only need one of them. And we've got a 500 milliamp fuse. It's a Pico fuse that we're going to use here just for safety. We come out of the secondary of the transformer through a 560 ohm resistor. Then we're going to have a 100 ohm resistor that goes from a junction right there down to the horizontal input, which is the other side of the transformer. And then we've got two 2.2 Ks that are in parallel with each other, connected from the line here, which is also on the vertical input of the scope to ground. Our red terminal will be right here on one side of the transformer, and our black terminal will actually be ground. And then these resistors just act as voltage dividers. Now let's put this together. It ought to go pretty simple, and then we'll have a look at it with the scope. To give us more time to play with this device, I've put it together here so that we wouldn't spend a lot of time soldering. You can see I've got the resistors mounted on the little piece of perf board here. All the wires connect to it. I've got a wire that goes over the transformer. There's the Pico fuse right there. And here's the 120 volts AC coming in. I'll take the transformer and slip it into the case. Now I'll slide the little perf board into its slot. And I've cut a notch here for the cable to go through to the banana plugs. Let's make sure that all our pieces of coax fit down in there good. Let's take a look at our scope squid in action now. I've got it connected to my Rigol DS1054 oscilloscope. I've got it connected to the first two inputs of the scope here. This particular scope has four different inputs. There's no horizontal input, though. You can select one of the regular four inputs here as being horizontal, and that's what we'll do. We've got the two outputs of the scope squid connected. We've got our two test leads sitting here for our component to be tested. And I've selected the XY mode on my scope here. Now, this scope is one of the newer digital scopes, and it allows us to do some measurements and see some things that we couldn't normally all see at once. Like right here, we're seeing just a regular oscilloscope type display. We can see the sine wave there of the 60 hertz signal of the scope squid. That's the voltage. That's on channel 1 here. Okay, so yellow is voltage. The blue here is going to be the current that's connected on channel 2. You can see right now our leads are open, so we've got maximum voltage, and we have no current. If we short them together, now we can see that our voltage just dropped, and we've got current flowing. That's not triggering on it, but that's okay. We also notice down here on the XY scale, when our test leads are open, we've got a straight horizontal line indicating voltage. When we short the leads, we've got a straight vertical line indicating maximum current flow. So let's test a few components now. We'll start out with a resistor. Here is a 1K ohm resistor. Actually, there's four of them, and I just didn't want to take them off the tape reel there. All right, you'll see a slope here. That's because we've got some current flow and some voltage. If you look here, you can see that the current and the voltage are basically in phase with each other and about the same value there. Now let's put a 10K ohm on here, and we'll see a very slight shift in it. That's because there's not nearly as much current flowing on a 10K ohm resistor here. As you can see up here, the voltage is still quite high, and the current is just flowing a little bit. Let's move on now and check some diodes. On our first diode here, we can see that we've got an L-shaped pattern here. This is our voltage once we reach a certain point. The diode turns on and it goes high. That's current flow. You can see it right here, the blue current flows. As the waveform swings positive, we can see the current start to flow and the voltage is held down. 
As it swings negative, we can see that the current stops and the voltage is allowed to swing negative. But when it swings positive again, it's limited and we have current flow. So let's turn on our cursor now so that we can actually look at the voltage here. We'll go down to XY mode on it. And this is not something that you'll have on an analog oscilloscope. That's okay, though. It's not something you normally need. It's just a convenience. We can see right here the AX cursor or marker there is 400 millivolts. That's where this diode turns on at 400 millivolts. Let's go to the larger diode. Well, we can see it's turning on at a much lower voltage. If we roll our cursor down there, we'll see that one turns on around 80 millivolts. So the difference in the two diodes. But typically what you're going to see when you've got a diode is this L-shaped pattern. Let's look at some capacitors now. Here's a 0.01 microfarad. We can see the beginnings of a lysergist pattern there, uh, a little bit of an oval. And you'll notice on the current, there's a slight twist in the current trace there. And the reason we don't have any more current than we do, and we've only got a slight oval there, is because a 0.01 microfarad capacitor doesn't conduct much at 60 cycles. So let's go on up here as a 2.2 uh, microfarad. Let's see what it looks like. Here we've got a nice circular lysergist pattern. And it's easy for us to see the phase shift between the voltage and the current that the capacitor is introducing. Now let's move on up to a 47 microfarad and see what we've got. Okay, now you'll notice that the lysergist pattern is shifted vertically. You can tell it's a lysergist pattern, though. We've got the slight ovaling there. But what's happened up here is our voltage is kind of flattened out, and the current is peaked up pretty high. That's because a 47 microfarad capacitor is going to conduct pretty good at 60 hertz. So that's what you would expect to see with some capacitors. Now, it's going to vary depending on the frequency, but our scope squid works at 60 hertz. Let's take a look at some transistors. Here's a little 2N2222. We'll measure from the base to the emitter. And I can see I've got the little L-shaped pattern here, like I had with the diode. That's what we'd expect. If we measure from the base to the collector, we've also got the little L-shaped pattern. So that's typically what you'd see with the transistor. If I try to measure between the emitter and the collector on here, I don't have anything. Let's check some other ones. There's some larger transistors here. This is a 2N3055, a fairly popular transistor. It's base, emitter, and then the case is a collector. So we'll clip our lead here to the base. If we measure to the emitter, we see we've got that L-shaped pattern. If we measure down here to the collector, we've also got the L-shaped pattern. So that's telling me that this transistor is good. Now I just happened to have another 2N3055 that obviously must have been in the same project as this one because I'd put some insulation on the legs of both of those. So we measure from the base to the collector and we've got our familiar L-shaped pattern. So we'd say, yeah, this is looking good. But now let's measure from the base to the emitter. Uh-oh. It's shorted. You notice the current's at maximum here, and the voltage is virtually flat there. I wish I had a Zener diode that I could show you, but I don't have any. But there you go, a simple little component tester, the scope squid. While we really didn't zoom in and take a critical look at the voltages here, we were able to determine if our components were good and what the various type of components should look like. The scope squid, a handy little project. If you Google, you'll find just hundreds of schematics on different variations of this thing. I appreciate Mike, VE3MIC, taking the time to get the plans and the parts together for this. It's been a lot of fun. He's actually building one himself, and I think maybe I'll finish mine first, but we'll have to see. And that is a really handy little device. You know, I'm surprised I didn't run across it earlier, but I had never really heard of anything like that until Mike brought it to my attention. I don't know if he's built it yet, but maybe he'll answer us there in the chat room and 
We'll find out if he has. Uh, I've got a couple of questions here, and I've got a couple of prizes. So let's get to those right now. You know, last week I asked a question. Uh, let's see. We looked at the Solder Pro 90, if you remember, that gas-powered soldering iron, and I asked, what fuel does the Solder Pro 90 use? Well, I got an answer from Seth Erickson. I got an answer from a lot of folks, but his is the one that came up in the random drawing. Seth said butane is a fuel, not plutonium. Great, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Seth, congratulations. We're going to see that you get a DX Engineering Canvas tote bag. A really nice bag for carrying your stuff around in. This is not one of those little, thin, flimsy shopping bags. This thing is huge, and it's heavy-duty. It's what I use to uh, carry my coaxes and extension cords and, you know, all my heavy stuff like that to fill day with. It's really nice, so I know you're going to enjoy that. For next week, I've got another question here, and uh, this one is, that little scope squid we just looked at there, you know, that device was around apparently for a long time, and somehow I missed it. It has another name that is uh, more popular than squid. If you think you know the answer to that, send it to me at hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you could win one of these right here. This is one of my favorite coax switches. This is the MFJ2703. This particular one has an end connector on it. It's a three-position coax switch. It's well shielded inside here, and it's wide band, so it works. Oh, gee, I think I've got the specs right here on it. The one with the end connector works uh, anywhere from DC to 1.5 gigahertz. So that'll cover just about anything you'd want to do. And it's also good, well, below 30 megahertz. You can run 2KW through this thing. Uh, up to 200 megahertz, you can run 1KW through it. So it's pretty heavy duty. If you remember, I built an Arduino uh, antenna switch controller or antenna disconnect. I don't know how long ago it was, but um, it's been over a year now. And I had a little servo that turned the antenna switch this is actually, I use the two-position version of this, uh, and it's it's worked flawlessly ever since. So uh, MFJ2703, this one with the type ends. If you want to win that, once again, uh, tell me, what was the original name of the scope squid? Contest at gmail.com. And we'll be back in just a moment, but first let's get a message from ICOM. Holiday season is here. Looking for the ideal gift for your favorite contester? The holidays are just around the corner, and ICOM has an array of radios to fill your stockings or place under the tree. Perfect for the contester on the go, try the IC7300. It's a high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with compact design. The real fun starts here. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3 inch color touchscreen, real time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. Push performance to the pinnacle with the IC7600. Following in the footsteps of ICOM's flagship radio, the IC7600 offers intuitive operation and the latest DSP technologies. Digital IF filter, dual DSP, 5.8-inch ultra-wide TFT display, and high-resolution, real-time spectrum scope. Raise the bar with the IC7851. Hear what others cannot with this HF 50 MHz transceiver. Reciprocal mixing dynamic range, crystal clear local oscillator design, spectrum scope, dual receivers, digital voice recorder, and more. To learn more about these and all of ICOM's great radios, visit icomamerica.com slash amateur today. And you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. 
Go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation. Register to win for some great swag prizes like T-shirts and hats. And while you're there, learn how you could win in the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. For November, that new radio is the ICOM ID51A Plus Dual Band Dual Watch VHF UHF Transceiver. It does analog and D-star. It has built-in GPS receiver, DV and FM repeater list functions, independent AM FM broadcast receiver. You can download a free Android app. It's got a micro SD card and a lot more. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this in each episode of Ham Nation and register to win. Sign up. Good luck, and don't forget to follow ICOM America, Inc. on Facebook and Twitter. And now, Val, you have, I don't know what you have tonight. Tell us about it. Well, I got a little of everything tonight. You know, this last year, we've seen a lot of top 10 most wanted D expeditions, and I've tried to show you a lot of those, and I have another one to show you. Uh, Seb who was on the FT4JA the expedition to Juan de Nova, gave me permission to show you some of their video. Um, so go ahead and roll it. Fox Tango 4, Juliet Alpha, the expedition to Randonov Island will be listening at 5. Delta Sugar India. Delta Sugar India at 5 and 9. Okay, Sugar Pepper 7, Delta Sugar India 7, it reads QRZ up. Okay, Florida, Tango 4, Japan, America, listen 5 up. Delta Florida 5, Alpha United 5 and 9. Thank you, listen up five. Delta Lima is Delta Engray Fox. Thank 
Thank you, listen up five. Oscar Hotel 6, Radio Echo 59. So we are in the front of uh, the Juan de Nova beach on the perfect location for our uh, Fox Tango Ford Japan Alpha the expedition at the north side of the island with a perfect takeoff to Japan, Europe and North America. Uh, this allows us to uh, use VDA antennas for the high band. These antennas are basically a vertical dipole together with a reflector which are mounted vertically in a diamond shape. But uh, what's happening uh, these days is only uh, uh, the visible part of the iceberg because uh, it took more uh, than a year to, uh, to prepare, uh, to collect all equipments, uh, testing everything, uh, collecting funds. Uh, and uh, the most important was to, uh, to get all authorization and uh, uh, to answer to all restrictions uh, about natural protection. Uh, the access to this island is uh, very, very restricted uh, and this island is much, much uh, protected. We should really have zero, zero impact on, on the island. Everything should be uh, like it was when, uh, when we arrived. And that is maybe uh, the most important part of, uh, of a de expedition like this. Merci beaucoup, merci à vous, votre présence. C'est vraiment très bien. Merci pour votre accueil, la disponibilité, la logistique. Prenez soin de Jean de Nova. Ouais. Okay, is it warm in here or is it just because there's a bunch of French guys with their shirts off? Um, hey, you know, that's a really cool, good video. And if you want to see it in its entirety, you can just go to wandanovadx.com and uh, see the whole video. I just had to chop it up to fit into the show. So um, those guys did very well. They did 105,000 QSOs. So uh, uh, well done uh, to the FT for JA team. Uh, also, I know two weeks ago I talked about uh, special event stations. Well, I thought I'd show you. We had a whole bunch of people from our ham club over, um, Metro DX Club, and we did the special event station for Walter Cronkite. So go ahead and roll that. Nine Trolley Special Event Station for Walter Cronkite. QRZ? Yeah, Whiskey Zero Quebec. Who's the Whiskey Zero Quebec something? Whiskey Victoria Zero Quebec. Whiskey Victor Zero Quebec. Good morning, 5-9 here into Illinois. Good morning, Val. You're 5-9 into Colorado. Thank you for this special event, and we love you on Am Nation 73. November 7, Juliet Alpha Papa. You're 5-9 into Crescent City, Illinois. Thank you very much. You're five nine, Bluefield Island, Washington. The handle's Jack. Julie down for Charlie Cuba. All right. Thanks for the contact, Jack. Got you in the logs. Cures. Whiskey Nine Charlie Special Event. Kilo Papa Four November Romeo Alpha. Kilo Papa Four November Romeo Alpha. I think I have that right. You're five and nine here in Illinois. USL. You're five nine Puerto Rico. Seventy three. 
at 73s. Thank you, sir. You are 5-9 in Plano, Texas. Uh, QSL, thank you for the plane, old Texas. Whiskey 9, Charlie, QRZ. QSL, 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 November 0, Kilo Victor, Norway. I got you in at 5-9. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for the contact. Yeah, very good, 5-9 here. Thanks for doing your special event. Very cool. 7-3, and the name is Kevin uh, in Utah. Uh, N0, KVN. Whiskey 9, Charlie. Kilo, Kilo 4, Juliet Tango, Whiskey. Kilo Kilo 4, Juliet Tango Whiskey, you are uh, 5-9. I read you 5-9, thank you very much for honoring Walter, it is appreciated, 73. Interesting, and uh, thanks, and uh, thanks for the contact. Roger, Roger, we got you 5-9 plus 10. Kilo 2 Tango Victor. Kilo 2 Tango Victor, good morning, you're 5-9 into Illinois. Hey, good morning, Val, this is K2TV, name is Bob, and... Uh, we worked uh, 40 years with CBS Television Network and uh, worked with uh, uh, Walter years ago. Anyway, uh, thanks for the uh, special event station, uh, K2TV. How cool is that? You got to work with Walter? Yeah, yep. I was in the technical department. He was, uh, of course, in the news department. A uh, real gentleman. Very cool, very cool. Well, those are probably some great memories. Appreciate you checking in and uh, helping share that with us today. And that's the way it is. That was pretty cool, and a lot of people had fun, and uh, I really recommend your club putting on a special event station. And for those of you who are curious, um, I did Facebook Live uh, a lot of our operating uh, from here, and if you go to our Ham Nation on Twit TV, um, there's one video on there um, of us operating. And just if you're curious how we did it, um, for Facebook Live, they, it's set up to do it from your phone, but if you want to do it from your computer, you have to download a special software. I downloaded OBS, but then I just run this splitter into the headphone jack of my radio, and off this is an audio um, cable that goes into my computer, and then my uh, webcam, and uh, voila, you can hear uh, the transmitting and the receiving of the radio onto the video, so it's pretty easy to do. Uh, if you want to start recording uh, while you're on the air. So uh, that's all I've got for this week. I know we've got some contests coming up. Uh, ARRL Sweepstakes is this weekend. Um, this one's really a good one because it's this contest focuses on trying to make sure you get a lot of information across uh, accurately. And that's really why we do contests to prepare for when there is an an emergency or a disaster, uh, getting accurate information to uh getting it out so like an ARRL sweepstakes the exchange is very long so if you do want to participate you can uh, the first thing you give out is a sequential serial number and then you give your class so if you're QRP you would give a Q if you're uh, low power 150 watts or less you'd give an A uh, 1500 watts or less you'd give a B um, or um, unlimited is a U multi multi operator categories an M or the schools would be an S so you'd give your class uh, so your serial number, your class, your call sign, and then the last two digits of the year you're licensed, and then your ARRL section. So it's kind of long, uh, but that's really the point of this, to get you used to uh, making sure you get accurate information um, as quickly as you can in case there is a disaster. Also, two weeks from tonight, or this two, in two, two and a half weeks, uh, we have, or 12 days, something like that. We have CQ Worldwide CW, which is a really big contest that's always thanks, usually Thanksgiving weekend. So um, that's a big one uh, coming up as well. So that's all I've got. So I'm going to pass it over to Amanda. Actually, you, why don't we pass, pass it over to me first and I'll give it to Amanda oh, yeah? because we've got some business to take care of real oh, quick. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. But listen, so Christmas is... Christmas is coming, and you're going to be on the naughty list. Um, <laughs> back in the day, of course, when it was Christmas time, everybody looked through the Sears and Roebuck catalog. When my son Tyler was young, it was the Toys R Us catalog. Well, the cool kids who watch Ham Nation, <laughs> this is the one to get right here, DX Engineering, because the holiday season is almost here. Haven't even thought about your holiday shopping? Didn't think so. Don't worry. It's all right here. DX Engineering has a series of Black Friday deals this week. It's the perfect time to get your gift list together for all the hams in your life or just, you know, for yourself. A ton of specials going on all week, including new DX Bucks deals. You can think of DX Bucks as gift certificates. 
You always earn these gift certificates whenever you buy selected DX Engineering DX Bucks eligible products. The DX Bucks award value varies depending on the overall retail price of your order. And DX Bucks are available on all sorts of gear from weather stations to Nanook equipment cases and uh, thousands of products in between. After your qualifying order, you get your DX Bucks certificate in the mail in about two to three weeks. Uh, that certificate has a special code which links to your DX Bucks promotion account. The next time you order online or by phone, give uh, DX Engineering that number. You're awarded the DX Bucks amount will be sliced right off the top of your order. It's easy as that. You save money. Check out the hot deal section at DXEngineering.com to see them all. The hot deal section also features deep discounts on radios from Icom, Kenwood, and Yezu. Instant rebates get you... Uh, you get at the moment you place your order, but you'll also find extra mail-in rebates on select products, too. There's a massive selection of radios, mobiles, base, handhelds. It's all there. Hot deal section. You'll find it. On sale, clearance, and special promotional pricing, too. And the inventory changes constantly, so bookmark the hot deal section of DXEngineering.com. Come back and check it off. And here's, here's a, a nice little stocking stuffer and... It's at a serious price. Look at this right here. This is, if you're in the market for an analog radio, this radio has been on the market for a long time, but they're being discontinued and they're discounted now. That is the Kenwood THF6A handheld tri-bander. VHF, UHF, and 220 incorporates a wideband receiver, easy-to-use interface, a slew of innovative features. Uh, this was my go-to analog radio before I got into the D-Star stuff, and, and I, I still love it. And, and the reason I love it is because it receives AM, it receives CW, it receives upper and lower sideband modes as well, and it is wideband. It's like having a shortwave receiver in the palm of your hand. The first ever compact handheld with built-in Vox capability as well. Uh, general coverage receiver, available for a limited time, $239.00. Right now at DXEngineering.com. I took this radio with me to the World War II Air Power Expo, and I was listening to the control tower, AM on VHF, listening to the air boss, listening to the World War II airplanes fly. If you're looking for an analog handheld, you will be hard-pressed to do better than, than one of these guys right here, and it's at a killer price, $239. And DX Engineering will ship this thing. Faster than anybody else in the industry. Get your order in by 10 p.m. Eastern. If it's in stock, it'll be on a truck headed your way tonight. Proven products, expert advice, the best people in the business. DX Engineering helps you shrink the globe. Request your catalog. Uh, shop online 24-7, dxengineering.com slash ham nation. And uh, get one of these catalogs. And uh, you, too, can be uh, one of the cool kids like me and George and Val and Gordon and Amanda. She's pretty cool, even though she's a Broncos fan. Oh, I was wondering if you were going to say my name in that. You're like the cool kids. And then there's the not so cool. <laughs> By the way, Matt, Mel is in the chat room right now. So this is when you said people have been talking about Black Friday. So Mel, in the chat room, tell us, are you guys having any DX uh, engineering Black Friday deals? So answer yes and tell us what they are if you're having any. Next thing, you guys, I got an email during the show. Harbor Freight has like four different items they're giving out for free this week. No purchases necessary. So, you know, we all love Harbor Freight. More reasons to go there. I know he's not an advertiser or anything like that, but it was just cool to see. You can get a free tarp, a free light, all kinds of cool stuff. So, all right. That being said, let's see that loser picture. Victor, do you have that for us? <laughs> yeah, there it is. There's my listen. That's coming down tomorrow. I said I'd give. I said I'd give you a week. Well, the Saints are playing tomorrow night, so I'm I'm taking I, that down. Tonight's the last night for that. So I understand, honey. It's okay. You little, go. Little, uh, anything to do to make those the Panthers go down is fine by me. So exactly. And see, I, 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 hello, hello, uh, hello, radio. But see, I, yeah, I, I paid off. I, I paid off on my bet. See, uh, that's <laughs> paid off on his bet. Okay, let's go back to Val. Valerie, love the live video, by the way. And we got a lot of comments on it on the Ham Nation Facebook page. You guys, of, of course, are all following us, I know. So some of the questions during that were, what made your audio sound so good? What amplifier were you using? Obviously, they could see the, the, the Heil Pro 7 headset, but were you guys doing anything else special that made you sound so good? Um, you know, I thought it actually ran a little hot because it, it sounds better when, you know, in your headsets than on that uh, Facebook feed. But we're using the, um, we had an OM, uh, which uh, 
sort of died uh, like three days later. So it's being repaired right now. Um, so that was the amp we were using. But um, yeah, it's all coming through the Heil. So, well, actually, it's coming out the the phone's feed. So, um, yeah. So since you're talking on, and I use a foot pedal and it goes in, you know, so you're getting it all coming out the, the phone. But uh, it was actually pretty easy to do because Facebook Live, I don't know why, it's just set up for your cell phone. And um, so you had to do get outside software to get it to work on a PC. Well, I'm uh, really glad well, you guys Now that it's all set it up, it's really a lot of fun to do contests. And I, I can't wait to do my next contest live with that. So okay. are you participating in sweepstakes? I'm not. I'm going to be a contest slave. Jerry's going to be a uh, single app. Oh, we're, we're doing multi. Never mind. I thought I was contest slave this weekend. So I guess I am participating. Oh, okay. Well, you guys have fun doing that. Um, okay. I have some announcements to make first, and then I have one other question here. Did um, I'm sorry. I don't know who stuck around. Is Gordo here? No. I don't think no, so. Gordo. No, okay. No, no Gordo. Left. All right. Let's go with some announcements first. Uh, first, we have a chat room, um, KG5QIA. He just got his technician, so congratulations. Well, and then we have, this cute, we have this cute story with Cliff. He said after 21 years, he finally decided to upgrade to general. And he said that it, it doesn't matter how long it takes, just do it. Uh, basically, he's a shining example of hanging in there and it, where it gets you. So Cliff, KA8GOV, congratulations for upgrading to general. My Woo! next one, <laughs> uh, do you guys remember the cutest girl, Audrey, that we had on our show? Um, she was doing, she was schooling us all on transistors during ladies night. She sent in the wonderful video, KM4BUN. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She upgraded yeah. to extra. And not all only right. that, then her little brother, Jack, same day takes the test and he became a technician. So congratulations to Audrey and Jack. I don't know Jack's call sign yet. I don't think he's gotten it. Um, but uh, awesome. I can't wait to uh, talk to Audrey on the air. And I hope that her and her brother come on the show sometime soon because they're just a who. Her and her dad and her mom are all licensed and it's a great time. All right. I know we've got a lot to go through here tonight. One more announcement. I've been having some questions. Where happened to everything in the background? The puppy. Radio. Um, we had to move everything out behind me because he tried to tear it all off. So if you're wondering what happened to my cute K1 DDN plaque and all that stuff, it's still around. And don't forget, you guys, Jim's Engraving does a great job. So it's, it's holiday season. Look them up. Um, okay. My next question, then this is just kind of a roundtable question. I'll send it to all of you. And we get this question and variations of it a lot. And it's always because of newcomers. And we should always be reminding people of this stuff. So KG5 OEH Adam is saying he's looking for his HF transceiver and looking for any suggestions for something that would fall under the $500 category. So Don, you go first. Uh, I, I'll tell you what's a lot of bang for the buck and you can find them for probably, a, um, you could probably go under five for something like this. An ICOM 706 Mark II G. It's small. It'll give you all of HF. It'll give you VHF and UHF. Uh, you don't get a tuner in that package, but uh, it's a great radio. It'll fit anywhere, mobile or base, um, and you'd be hard-pressed to do something uh, better than a 706 Mark II G. Uh, if you want to go a little bit higher up, maybe an ICOM 7000, but I would suggest a 706 Mark II G. Best bang for the buck, in my opinion. Very good. George, what do you suggest? Yeah, I would say the 706 is a good choice if you can find one at that price. They're, they're still real popular. Uh, 7,000, yeah, you'll, they, they've yeah. held their value pretty well, so they'll be a little higher. Typically for uh, less expensive radios, I've bought, um, well, actually, I've had a, a couple of Kenwoods that are, are a little larger, you know, like a, a 430. The TS-50, the TS yeah, 50 oh, maybe? Oh, haven't yeah. had that. If I had a 430 and a 450, and you know, I paid around um, 300 to 350 dollars for those radios. And of course, you can find ICOMs and uh, and Yezus around that price too. Mm -hmm. Look around, um, but I'll just say be be careful. You know what you buy. Maybe uh, if you, it's any way you can test it out, do so. If you can buy it from someone you know. Uh, that's even better because most all of the the really old radios like that, 
where you know I was down in the three to four hundred dollar range, I had to eventually do some work on those because there was um, you know some issues with it. So a seven oh six, I think you'd be safe with. Um, but any of them, I'd say, you know, um, if there's a way you can verify it works, do that. I, I don't think I would uh, buy it off the Internet. No. Okay, Valerie. Hi. My very first radio happened to be um, a 706 Mark IIG. I paid $400 for it in 2011, um, and it was great. Like, like uh, Don said, uh, all bands, all modes. It worked great. And then I, if you can afford to move up to the next level, I would recommend an FT-1000. I love FT-1000. Great filters. Um, but I think I paid 1000 for that, so I don't think you're going to find, you know, maybe if you can find a good deal. But, yeah, the 706 Mark IIG, perfect starter radio uh, before you uh, really get into the hobby and decide what you want to get. Yep. I agree. And... My suggestion is actually you're never going to want to just spend $500 on a ham radio. Sorry, radio wants to really come in and say hi. It's very hyper tonight. Um, so my suggestion actually is borrow somebody else's radio that might be at that price range and see what you think. And then also go to your field days or any of like special event, things like that. And listen to some of the upgraded models of radios. And I think that you're really going to fall in love and want to spend the higher price. It's my personal opinion, I think. But um, anyhow, you guys, uh, that's all we have for tonight. So let me do some net announcements. I don't think we're having the 20 meter net anymore. You know, wintertime bands not open, stuff like that. So tune in to 40 meters on 7180. Don't forget D Star Net on 14 Charlie and also our Echo Link Do Drop In. And uh, hopefully we'll hear you on all of those. So who's wrapping it up tonight? I, I got one uh, more suggestion. Uh, get with a get with a local club, get with a local club, and and go around to to some of their shacks and try out their stuff. Or if you got a good club station, that'll give you a good idea of what you might want to uh, gravitate towards. Everybody has their favorite brand, whether it be Icom, Yezu, Kenwood, whatever. They're all good. Uh, it's just whatever you get comfortable with. And uh, my first HF was was Icom, and I kind of fell in love with Icom. I've had uh, I've had uh, Kenwood as well. I've never had Yezu HF, but uh, get around in a club where you can kind of try everything out and you'll figure out what you want. You'll find something in your price range. And one of your club members might actually say, well, you know, I've got one of those radios here. I haven't used it in 10 years. It's just sitting around gathering dust. Why don't you just take it home with you? It happens. Happened to me That's once. That's exactly right. Yep. And a lot of them can be loners. They'll be like, well, hey, just take this out. Nah, it's, it's just laying here in my shack. Put a wire exactly. on it and see what happens. So I think exactly. that's the best way to go. Your clubs are always wanting to help you. So join those clubs, you guys. All right. Back to you, whoever's closing it up here. It's been a fun tonight. George. Okay, Amanda. And also, I would say don't get something super sophisticated for your first radio unless you've got a friend who has one that can come over and program it for you. Because <laughs> it's, uh, you, you know, you don't want to have to face that. You, you want to be able to just get on the air and go with it. But, you know, if you're looking for something that you're going to have to dig into the menus, if you've got a friend or an Elmer somewhere who knows something about it, well, you're, you're ahead of the game because you can put all that weight on them and ha have them come bail you out. Well, uh, good show tonight, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Let's go around one time before we leave. Don, any final words tonight? Uh, yeah, YouTube is your friend for anything. You can find out more about anything <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, I, I just dug into an automatic transmission in my car and I spent hours looking on YouTube on how to fix that before I got in there and, and turned the first bolt. Same thing with amateur radios. You can go on YouTube and find out all kinds of quirks and uh, foibles and good stuff and bad stuff. So uh, YouTube's a great tool, George. That's all I got for tonight. Yeah, internet in general. You know, I, I do a lot of my uh, minor car repairs and, and such. And you know, elect electronic gear I'm working on, too. I'll do a search on the Internet. You'll be surprised how many times someone else has come across the same problem you've got and, and knows the answer. Well, Val, uh, what about you? Any, any final, uh, I guess, Thanksgiving thoughts for us? That's what I was just going to say. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody because I'm not going to be back for two weeks. So everybody have a great one. Drive safe. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you guys in two weeks. Okay. We'll see you then.
Amanda and Radio. Yeah. Radio had to go away because uh, he was he was being vocal again. Um, anyhow, YouTube is your friend. Uh, I just used it today for car things. I had to find out where my mom's ambient temperature sensor was for outside air on her Chevy Sonic. Thank goodness for YouTube. And I feel bad for all the videos I should have made to teach other people things that I have not done. Um, but they always have to be censored because it cuss a lot. Anyhow, that's it, you guys. <laughs> Over to you, George. Okay, well... We're, we're glad you get that out before you get on the show here, Amanda. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Yeah, and and speaking of videos on YouTube, I just uh, released one with my friends over at AmateurLogic.tv. You can go over there and check out our latest episode. A uh, lot of fun on that one, as always. Thanks for being here, everyone. Great to have you with us tonight. I believe Bob will be back with us next week. Uh, do join us then because it will be the Thanksgiving extravaganza. 73. Gobble, gobble.